Hello everyone. My name is Gulshan Memoria. I'm the CEO and a founder of a company called Inspired Valley. Recently, we've started this series called Inspired Valley School Initiative, where we connect with the best educators in the country and to discuss on some of the important topics. Like today's topic is strategies for addressing and preventing bullying in schools. And to discuss this topic, we have some esteemed panelists with us. The very first speaker we have is Mr. Rohit Ash Dudi. He is the principal of Gouda International School, Junjunu, Rajasthan. Next speaker we have Miss Sujata Naidu Sayana. She is the principal at the Creek Planet School, Venus Campus, which is in Hyderabad. We also have Miss Anju Arora. She is the director of academics at the Rose Orchid World School, Ponta Sahib, Himachal Pradesh. Next we have Miss Minakshi Gaur. She is the headmistress at Birla Public School, Pilani. And lastly we have Miss Jayashri Garg. She is the principal at IBL Public School, Panipat, Haryana. I welcome you all on our show. Okay, let me ask the very first question with Mr. Rohit. Uh, Mr. Rohit, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. You are very much audible. Fine. So, Mr. Rohit, addressing the preventing, addressing and preventing bullying in schools is a critical issue, and that requires a comprehensive approach, right? So, as a principal, what yes. specific strategies have you implemented in the, your school to create a safe and inclusive environment for students? Over to you. Yeah, actually, you know, bullying is a very term which generally is being defined by many people in a simple way. First, we need to identify whether it's a joking or it's a bullying. Mm -hmm. So to have the clear distinction and difference between bullying and other aspects of behavior needs to be I mean, verified and established. Beyond that, if we happen to find that this happened, then we need to try to find out the regions because there are some people, especially we are talking in the school industry, so we will be concerned with the students, not with the people. So why some students are in habit of bullying others hmm. and those who are getting bullied also, why they become the soft target? These two are the most important regions. Exactly. Now, so now to establish the region of bullying, we need to talk to the student. We need to study the student's family environment and the environment of his or her residence. Mm -hmm. That what sort of people he is living with. Mm -hmm. Then be beyond the environment, there are other issues also. We need to check the peer group of the student that with whom he or she is sitting. What sort of regions are there? What is the performance level of the student? Sometimes out of frustration also we try to establish. Exactly. It's a kind of weak. See, we, we find it is an identity problem sometimes. There are some people who are not, I mean, mm. getting in people's attention. So it is a psychological disorder attention. to see. Yeah. yeah, to seek the attention of some people. Sometimes they do some kind of act which they don't exactly is bullying. It converts automatically there into bullying. Mm. So in most of the times, what we find that there are the students who are seeking some kind of, you know, attention. They, they, they suffer from attention deficit order. Hmm. Or sometimes to establish their bubble reputation. I call it bubble reputation because it is very temporary there in the schools for the sake of students. Exactly. Even for even for that purpose, even because you know some of the students or the peer group friends of theirs don't get to agree to their behavior, don't join their group, or don't join their activities. So to make them to join with them, sometimes they create an atmosphere of fear. Hmm. It is nothing but intimidating, you know, the colleagues, especially there in the school. Mm. But deep down, we, we have studied if the, it is not being prevented. If there is no proper strategy, if exactly. it is not being addressed, it is causing a lot of psychological disorder and uh, long-lasting trauma, even with the student who is bullying, as well as the one who is being bullied. Mm. And beyond That's... these two... Beyond these two, there are the other students there in the same circle or in that class that they start thinking about exactly they got influenced as well with their with the other section so let's let's take the yeah. views of other speakers as well then we'll focus on some of the strategies how the schools is preventing this ecosystem right so Jata ma'am i would like to have your views on the bullying yeah how your school is experiencing yeah yeah uh, good evening everybody all the esteemed speakers and uh, yes yeah uh, this uh, bullying is, you know, happening across the schools, across the colleges, across the universities. It is not only in the schools, it is as well even, you know, uh, in an outside world also. So if hmm. we talk about the cyber bullying, 
which is uh, like you know bullying with the use of the digital technologies is actually happening more with respect to all these adult students that right? is grade 6 upwards or grade 7 mm. upwards which is uh, you know on the social media like you know messaging platforms the exactly. gaming platforms and you know through these mobile phones okay this is a repeated behavior which is aimed at you know scaring you know angering or shaming you know those who are targeted like you know kind of and you know which includes like you know spreading of lies or about you know or posting embarrassing photos or videos of someone on social media and sending some kind of hurtful or abusive or threatening kind of messages or images or videos you know this is been happening and you know face to face bullying or and cyber bullying can often happen alongside you know from both the parties mm. uh, but you know cyber bullying leaves a digital footprint which can also prove that useful and you know uh, evidence also you can get you know and you will be more worried about the safety or something that has happened when exactly. it comes to our school that is in the creek school or we are the group of schools mm. where we have a anti bullying committee you know so generally children come with a lot of you know a uh, questions that you know i am getting bullied over you know at home through some facebook or through instagram or maybe in the classroom you know or maybe by other section students and exactly you know, so that uh, that is the reason we have a anti bullying committee uh, and every year we keep working on this com- committee so mm. in this committee it is not just the teachers or principals are there we will be having our uh, you know student council members also who will be given an uh, who will be given an opportunity mm-hmm. to you know because all students may not be comfortable with teachers or the principals or the coordinators they they can be comfortable with their fellow mates you know mm-hmm. their peer group so that is how this anti bullying committee has been you know created in the school every year mm-hmm. and then we try to find out what uh, how the children are being bullied and we have a kind of suggestion box Mm. or you know kind of uh, this committee who have placed you know in all the corners of the campus mm. because it is a huge building that's a and wonderful we, uh, that's a wonderful suggestion even um, i mean if you are implementing this just one yes, question yes. how you are maintaining the anonymity because the student feel very anxious when it comes to facing the bullying and they don't they don't yes. very feel very confident or um, good about it when it comes to sharing their experiences with the fellow yes. students or the teachers so do you have this kind of mechanism in place how you yes. maintaining this uh, yeah no we do have that actually most of the students they cannot share this with their parents unfortunately exactly. they are not getting that comfort zone with the parents so either they share with their uh, fellow mates or if they are very close to their one of the subject teacher or class teacher mm-hmm. and as a principal i give them lot of liberty to take an appointment with the principal and then they come and meet me where they i have given them the trust that i am not going to discuss if anything they are facing you know kind of these kind of difficulties because i personally take sessions with the students for all these adolescent students few a uh, combined uh, you know sessions and few for girls separately and boys separately this is very much required me exactly. along with my team we do this and then we give them that uh, it will be kept completely confidential if you are facing any exactly. such kind of exactly so th- this was my Whether point it can be a hmm. teacher to student or a student to teacher also it is not just student to student or maybe not might be with the neighbor or maybe with their you know Uh, uncles or aunts or parents whatever it can be any kind of bully we give them that open suggestion box without the name or something then mm. we collate all this data after every fortnightly and then every fortnight we have a meeting with regards to this mm. so uh, so based on the uh, kind of suge- i mean you know box comments or uh, you know uh, all these concerns come we segregate whether to take a combined session to the students and teachers or we should segregate so after the taking the feedback you take some proper interventions timely yes. interventions wonderful yes, yes. let me yes. come back to you later first let me yes. take the point with jashree ma'am jashree yes. ma'am would like to share your views on this how your school is experiencing kya bullying ki pani pat haryana ka jo atmosphere hai thoda sa strong atmosphere hai right which i feel because we are neighbors right delhi is i'm not south ka atmosphere thoda different hai but haryana guest most way because i have visited many schools in haryana and when you conduct the teachers training program and you don't find any teachers over there it's very hard to handle the the grade 10th onward students what are your views on this just first unmute yourself good evening everybody i am really very thankful to uh, inspire valley that they are giving us a, such opportunity that we can meet together on this platform mm-hmm. and we can share our views so especially sir i want to tell i am totally agree with sujata ma'am 
like the same thing we are even doing like uh, in the assembly even we are showing some nukkad natak to okay. uh, means to address that what bullying is so the student they are able to understand we talk with the parents even same way we are taking a different different session with six class onward and mainly these days bullying is through internet Hmm. mainly whatsapp this and that even some parents they are directly coming to us meeting us like one six class student parent they come to me ma'am there is a group bff boyfriend hmm. girlfriend groups are made <laughs> and now my child is told if you tell somebody regarding this group you will be out of that group and you will not be that group and whatever homework we have to send this and that whatever you are getting from school nothing will be getting if you are going to tell anything about uh, this to your class teacher Or to mm. anybody, like we are seven student together, or we are ten student together, uh, we are in this group. This is boyfriend group. This is girlfriend uh, group. This type of things are going on these days. Hmm. Like no doubt, boys and girls they are sending messages. They are find out the phone number from anybody, and all these type of bullying is now these days means the way we are in hard time when we are studying, like in colleges and universities. Uh, these days are gone now. <laughs> these type of bullying are not there like we are saying dragging and all these things you have to means aapko jhukna hai aapko namaskar karna hai this way this and that thing these are now means gone that days mm-hmm. now the bullying is through mainly through the internet the main thing is that i'm totally agree with sujata ma'am mm-hmm. the bullying now these days through net and all these things are coming to us uh, same You're way with the right cabinet right member you're absolutely right ma'am thank you for bringing out this issue i would like to have uh, some views from anju ma'am anju ma'am please share your views i'm sure the kind of experience that you have Hi. you will bring out more um, understanding about the bullying concept which were there 10 years before what has has, has changed in the couple of years yeah good evening everyone and a uh, big thanks to you mr gulshan memoria for uh, bringing the bullying actually the most commonly spread but very much under reported issue mm. is in the schools though lately we have come out in the public and we are talking about it what my take on it is that rather than going curative if we are into preventive mode mm. that means if we aware our children from the beginning what bullying is what harms does it cause to the bullying the person who is bullying and who is being bullied and uh, what kind of actions are to be identified as bullying and what is not bullying uh, hmm. now since it has become a trend and a fad to talk about bullying so what happens every single small thing that anybody speaks or does or even a, a very well meaning hearty laugh is considered as bullying because we do not know what is actually bullying and what is not bullying exactly. so we uh, i believe in just jotting down making it very clear with the children and and then of course sitting with the teachers and uh, jotting it down what can be considered as bullying and what can be considered as just a perfect suggestion proper segregation of yes. the instances and Wonderful. then then we focus on identifying the behavior and yes uh, the main important um, is uh, the how do we identify that is bullying or not if it is intentional and repeated hmm. with a with an intention to cause harm to somebody it can be physical it can be social it can be cyber bullying we are talking about all those yeah bullying. mental yeah of course right. yes but until and unless we empower our children to first identify whether it will be called a bullying or it will be just a good natured friendly talk or friendly teasing or fun mm-hmm. this is what we work on and this is preventive i believe then what we do with teachers and parents educators and parents with parents also we build up this understanding mm. uh, And, and it's not that the bullying doesn't happen; it happens in real world. And you know, it starts not from classes six, seven, eight onwards that we usually assume. It starts from as small a class as nursery children. The mm. children in the class, those who those who snatch a particular child's toy in the Ooh, hand, yes, and it is done repeatedly every day. Mm. It's not that the child is just aggressive. This is the beginning of the bullying. This Somewhere, is the kind of behavior which they learn yes. at their houses. And, and, and yeah. what I believe is that we have to, like uh, Mr. Roitash was sharing, we have to find out the reasons why the bullying happens. What is the environment? Where is the child growing up? What is the neighborhood? What are who are the peers? I believe uh, a small child, nursery, KG classes children, when they are into this kind of behavior, definitely at home someone is bullying someone. The bullying is a learned behavior. Hmm. 
who is a learned behavior and the child is watching someone in the home pow- overpowering somebody else either, mm. either physically verbally or socially and then the child picks up so we believe i personally believe much on preventive side of it and yes we have mechanisms in place for the if in case it happens which of course is there but when we talk and go in preventive mode awareing the children identifying the behavior this will be considered bullying this will not be considered bullying then having the systems in place where to report whom to report hmm. how to report who can they approach to this all settled i usually find that the cases of bullying go actually down hmm. because children yeah, absolutely are, right you absolutely and, this and leads to uh, yeah this social skills socio emotional skills life skills they start understanding hmm. the whole power game of bullying and it's a continuous it's thing like you cannot teach anyone in just one day it's a continuous process if you're teaching the first standard child it will lead to the good behavior in sixth standard if you're teaching the sixth standard guy it takes a lot of time and it's a combined efforts like it's not just the only the principal is taking decisions every teacher is have to be a well trained teacher in terms of taking the right mechanism or the right interventions right okay that leads to my next question अंजू मैम आपसे ही है सो क्रिएटिंग अ सेफ एंड इंक्लूसिव स्कूल इन्वायरमेंट रिक्वायर्स कलेबोरेशन अमंग एडुकेटर्स पेरेंट्स एंड द कम्युनिटी व्हिच इज द बेस राइट सो हाउ डू यू एंगेज एंड इन्वॉल्व दीज स्टेक होल्डर्स इन योर एफर्ट्स टू एड्रेस एंड प्रिवेंट बुलिंग स्पेशली द पेरेंट्स एंड द कम्युनिटी या यस विशन आई वुड लव टू शेयर वन थिंग आई एम अ सर्टिफाइड पेरेंटिंग कोच एज़ वेल Uh, my main area of interest are academics and parenting today wonderful i believe in creating a curriculum which gives children the opportunity to develop on all fronts physical socio emotional uh, your spiritual all aspects are taken care of and my major focus is on socio emotional skills to be developed properly okay what happens when we take these life skills with the children and we make them aware in the group scenario when we provide them the activities and when they come out with the solutions themselves building upon the understanding that they that they develop during the session uh, more often they are they are means prone i'll say they are more likely to follow the solutions that they have built up below themselves mm-hmm. then on the front of the pa- uh, parents uh, i do conduct a lot of orientation sessions in the beginning of the academic session with the parents mm-hmm. to uh, make them aware about the school's way of working functioning what are the areas that the school's focus that school uh, particularly our school focuses on and what do we expect from the parents hmm. and because you see uh, a child is raised at two places hmm. uh, a significant amount of time child uh, child's time is spent into the school but more than that is spent at home so we exactly. both of us parents and educators for certain values to be established and built we need to be on the same page exactly and proper expectation are, has to be laid off right we, yeah, we, we have, have to, to set the, the right page. expectations yes, not everything yeah. can be done by the school it has to the parent responsibility as well And, and you know we the the use uh, the most challenging part is that you know the uh, children those who are in our classes alpha generation you know they are exactly. the children those of those are born after 2012 2012 just to make this clarity all are alpha generations and they are say they, they are different i mean than yeah. the previous generations so definitely when they are different their action has to be different thank you anjuman for sharing your wonderful views now i'll take the views with uh, miss minakshi miss minakshi would like to share your views up like i'm sure that recently when we visited your campus like your campus is really beautiful it's so huge i'm sure that you have proper mechanisms in place right because when you are taking care of with the value system with the birla school so i'm sure there's lot at stake so h- how you intervene or what are your uh, uh, take on this with the bullying and preventing the bullying mechanism see uh, as we are the boarding schools best Uh, specifically mm-hmm. so in our case uh, a new area get generated in hostel mm-hmm. in dining hall in playground everywhere every space become the a stage for them to bully someone exactly and uh, to make it lesser and decreased what we used to do or we what we uh, did in fact uh, this was an experiment for me also like uh, when our new team because it happens with especially uh, or generally it happens with the new student from the hmm. old student like uh, when the new uh, lot comes in and, uh, mm-hmm. and the old ones are already there they used to uh, bully the new students so in that case what we did like uh, before they join 
we uh, emotionally blackmail them in a proper way that uh, you are the <laughs> mentor, you have to play the role of mentor to them so that you will be. And, and this definitely encourages the students to help the new students. Mm. Right? Uh, so uh, we uh, made them sit together, we made them understand that you are the responsible people to make the new lot adjust or uh, settle mm. down because uh, the teachers can play their own role. The staff members can play their own role, but the students, their friends, plays a vital role. They play a vital role in settling down the new students. So let so me give you one example. See, boarding schools, they have their own mechanisms. To be very frank, apart from the teacher's code, the students have their own code. In my early days, I visited one school called Army Public School, Dakshai, where Mr. Sanjay Mishra was the principal. So he gave us three days opportunity. It's a wonderful example. He gave us three days opportunity to interact with different, different classes. So bullying was a topic, life skills was a topic and goal setting was a topic. So one topic in just one day. So when we interacted with the students of 9th and 10th standard, especially for the bullying topic, you won't believe they have their own codes. And they are too strict with their codes. You cannot intervene. Even the teachers, they, uh, the students, they don't share. And they do every possible thing with the bullying system. They bully everyone, but the students cannot come to the principal, cannot go to the teacher because they have a very strong code in place. So, see, boarding schools have a different mechanism. Day boarding has a different mechanism, right? In our case, we cannot crack their codes. <laughs> no one can crack their code, believe me. <laughs> Even when I was in a, when I was a boarding student, hmm. nobody could crack my code. What I, I was using, but I was not uh, doing that. Wonderful, wonderful. But uh, sometimes it happens. Ki, uh, we need to make them understand. We need hmm. to we also give them mentorship. What I believe and what I feel that we need to create the kind of mechanism where Miss Miss Sujata was saying that okay, the anonymity has to be maintained. So if they are facing any problem which can be avoidable or which is avoidable, then there should be a mechanism in place where okay, that whosoever has did that, so the principal has to take it in a very cool manner so that nobody get harm right in the process and the person who is experiencing this bullying system will also get the result out of it over to you Ms. Sajada you have raised your hand please make your point yeah I just wanted to add on few points with please 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 Sam has told mm -hmm. uh, as you said as you also said Gulshan sir uh, regarding this they have their own quotes I, I completely 101% agree with you because we are facing a lot of trouble and struggle in mm. you know, painting our washrooms of students. <laughs> okay, it's not just boys; it's also the girls' washroom. Mm. You know, we are unable to track because we don't keep the CCTV surveillance exactly. in the washrooms, right? We cannot. Okay, mm. and uh, you know, even in the wash area also, we have not kept where they wash their hands. So all the walls are written with all these, uh, you know, names and you know, mm. all they do. They do. Of, yes. Yes, all the pictures of, you know, uh, you know, unwanted pictures, you know, mm -hmm. it's really being very difficult and other children who are visiting, who are unaware, are learning those terminologies, learning mm. all those unwanted things and they're carrying it to their home. So innocently, they ask their parents that so and so things were written. What is the meaning of those kind of words? And mm. then I get, you know, huge mails and then, you know, I keep <laughs> on calling the students and uh, uh, what they do is they don't write the in the washrooms where they use it. They go to the other floors. Mm. You know, it is a break time. It is a break time common for everybody that 15 minutes of short break and then half an hour, half an hour of lunch break. You know, they go to the other, uh, this one, and there they write. So this hmm. is what we are facing difficulty and we are trying to track and send the gen faculty <laughs> to the, you know. I'll, I'll share members. one example. So in that school, Army Public School, Dakshai, we made, like we conducted one activity. So activity was, there was a white chart paper. In chart paper, we made one boy and one girl. Then we ask all the boys to come to that chart paper and write anything on that chart paper. Then we crush it. Then we again remake it to the on the same space then we tell them okay now it's been crushed and you cannot get back to the same space so do not make any sentences you won't believe what the students wrote it down and when the psychologist was asking what they have written though as a boy like we could able to understand what the boy has written but we could not able to comprehend or tell the counselor okay this is the meaning of this slang is this 
ओवर टू यू मिस अंजू प्लीज प्लीज मेक योर पॉइंट थैंक यू सो ज्यादा मैम uh we can't hear you uh, you need to unmute yourself i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah please yes like this other you were talking about the challenge that the writing in the walls of the washrooms mm-hmm. uh, this is i believe one practice which is a uh, 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 at one point or the other time is always observed in all the schools mm. and we also have faced this you know what we uh, did in my previous school when we came across this kind of things uh, we have fixed the floors for the classes which floors uh, which classes will you use which floors washrooms and then no other floors uh, children will be allowed no common time no common washrooms will be used this helped us to trace that and then what we did uh, we uh, we took the handwriting sprint and we did the total you, you will you believe because it was becoming so rampant and so so dirty it was becoming it had to be checked in we took the samples of the writing and then we took out the copies of that uh, all students of that class and we matched the words you can say and we zeroed on on to three children three children and then we had one to one talking with them no threatening just talking to them and making them understand what all is happening and now the evidence is in front of you you mm. can't say no either but either one of you is there and they accepted that and then they understood what they were doing was wrong sometimes we have to become the investigators like that with the children and in in this school also we faced the same thing and this time it was nobody else it was my name written in the washrooms three times <laughs> why because the topics that we were covering some child might not be liking hmm. and we applied the same strategy we took the handwriting samples it takes a lot of time for a one particular teacher to sit and do that but then we make it a point we had it has to, to be identified yes. Yes. if it is not identified and it is left unchecked it will create further problems exactly so you are absolutely right i personally, right. Believe, I personally right. believe three hours to uh, bullying you have to recognize that it is bullying and then it is uh, you have to means, see the uh, point which you are making either you don't go into it let the things uh, yes. happen either like you either you don't don't, don't care this. like either you don't care and you do just focus on education in the other aspects and if you are going into the deep yes. diving then, you have to then go, yes the you have then you cannot let it go respond and report yes so when it was recognized that this is an act of bullying and you know what happened that that uh, particular instance my name came the third time before hmm. that it was a name of two children three children then every day we when we, uh, we have a practice in our school in the evening all the washrooms will be checked by one supervisor and if they come across any writing on the wall the very same day it will be painted after taking the print it will be painted so that the minimum number of children are exposed to any vulgarity if it is there hmm. right and then when third time it came my name because the child was not able to see uh, and it was going out every day the child was not able to meet the purpose with which it was hmm. happening then then three days my name came Hey, this and is a good we, strategy, Anju, ma'am. This is a good strategy. At the end of the day, it will only you cost you one supervisor and one Asian paint dabba. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> we have been doing it for the means uh, since I am an administrator, yes. eighteen, nineteen years back. Whenever we came first time, where uh, I don't remember exactly the year when we came mm-hmm. first time across this vulgarity, I never let the vulgarity remain on the wall. Mm. Just paint it. That's a that's a good off. that's a good strategy. Thank you, thank you, Anju, ma'am. Over to you, Jashree, ma'am. You would like to make your point, please, please do that. The same, same thing. I am also talking about. Like my school is not so big. I am having only nine hundred students. Mm-hmm. Still, after every week, I have to again do that painting with Asian painting. This but is a very major topic. On. We have to discuss thing, this. But I make in one length. thing. Like uh, I told my PTIs and all the teacher, whosoever student is going to washroom, you have to check the pockets, mm. whether they are girls or boys. If they are, you are going to find any pencil, any pen, any color, anything, fifty rupees fine will be imposed, without asking anybody. You have to take fifty rupees for that child. Why mm-hmm. he is going out with some pen, pencil in his or her pocket? Mm-hmm. This we have started, and That, now see is every school is facing place. the same issues one another, right? So let's focus on some preventive actions. Let's take it some preventive actions. So my question was, I mean, creating a safe and inclusive school environment, you need the support from all the stakeholders, the educators, parents, and the community. So would you like to share some examples how you include the parents and community for making the preventive actions? For an example, conducting, uh, conducting one workshop with some of the with one of the parent, right? On a, on a particular topic. So how these things actually. 
uh, creating a deep impact on your mind you should not be indulged in this kind of activities with just only one hour session with one of the parent who is supposed to be a psychologist or who is supposed to be a doctor right so anything if your school is doing how you are collaborating with the society at large for an example if you are calling someone from the police department you are calling someone from the other department so when you are calling someone from the police department if anything if you are bullying someone anything happen as such with the other child so what will be the uh, repercussions i mean with your career and with your life as well so this will create a can say this will create some some sort of can say danger in their mind ki ha yaar ye cheez nahi karna hai now this is something i should not be doing it so if anyone is doing this kind all this kind of things one by one please raise your hand and i'll give you the opportunity please summarize do not take more time over to you rohit sir you have raised your hand please yes sir in fact uh, just now jayshree ma'am was telling about what actions they are taking there in their school and you were mm-hmm. also telling see what happens when we call the parents of the concerned student mm-hmm. it is only maybe one parent or two parents who are known about what strategy it is they can implement only on their children mm-hmm. but where we have thousands of students in the school mm-hmm. what we actually do is sometime periodically maybe once in week once in fortnight we conduct a kind of skit through the students in mm. which we just exemplify this is what happened and how the other student got impacted with it mm. the impact and the influence over the bullied student is being shown through the form of skit so all other students are getting aware about it that wonderful. is one thing what we do is wonderful so skit and drama other... is one way through which that you yes. are teaching the or sensitizing the students wonderful suggestion second any other correct next thing is the student who is bullying the others we call the parents and then we get the parents and the student agreed that the student who did this kind of mistake or misee for bullying should accept it very politely in the assembly in front of everyone else okay. so others will also get to know that if we if we do it tomorrow our parents also will be called and the things mm-hmm. will be discussed in front of them and then we have to cut a sorry figure of course it is not a very good thing sometimes i feel like it's a very contentious thing even i was thinking the same thing yeah in front of all the students calling the parents would be yes. very hard thing for the no. students and would create some negative repercussions no, no. in the it's, students mind this is what i think no no it's it's it is not the parents to be called in front okay. of all the students mm mm-hmm. only it the student the parents to be called in the principal's office along with their ward mm-hmm. and then it is being discussed and the concerned ward of the student of the school is being convinced by the principal ki okay beta you have done this wrong thing now tomorrow in the assembly in a very polite manner you just tell it to everybody in assembly mm-hmm. that i did something wrong for which i feel ashamed of and i request you all also not to do it mm-hmm. and i regret my act because it has caused some harm to my friend so i request all of you all mm-hmm. my friends in the assembly not to do such kind of things so that we need to get it convinced in front of the parents with that particular student who did the wrong thing mm. so that also has played a very vital role there in our school Good. that by looking at that student the others are not doing it mm. great great rohit sir thank you for sharing your uh, suggestions over to you sujada ma'am uh yeah i just would like to add a few points to what sir said and what anju ma'am also has told yes we all know that uh, you know almost uh, approximately 20% of the you know school students always report for the you know because of their they are being bullied okay uh, what uh, uh, we do here is generally the principal or the coordinators or the class teachers or every subject teacher we are all trained you know to counsel the students or the parents in whatsoever kind of uh, you know whether it is bullying or any other you know kind of uh, uh, tasks also and uh, generally we teach them that kindness and empathy first of all hmm. okay and then when we call the guest speaker also we tell them that this is what we want the session for our students hmm. and uh, yes as ma'am said it is not only anju ma'am said like it is not just sixth of course it is happening in the lower classes i truly agree with that okay so that good touch and bad touch kind of sessions we generally conduct every time only the principal or the teachers or the subject teachers and coordinators say it might not be so impactful so at mm. times you know in a monthly basis or based on the requirement 
we generally call the guest speakers from outside who are wonderful you, know, you kind rightly of pointed out and, and mm. then all this with the anti you know bullying committee and all we all together set up and then we have a nice presentation to make them understand it is not that just you know whenever there is an issue we start doing this it is exactly. a part of our curriculum actually okay. there has to be preventive mechanism in yes, place yes. so you know would not be wait for any actions to get happen right correct, we need correct. to take multiple yeah. actions and nothing will yes. take place yeah in mm-hmm. this only we teach that you know kindness and then empathy and you know creating opportunities for their you know connections mm-hmm. you know fostering a sense of community in the classroom you know which can lower the bullying incidents actually exactly. and anything uh, is identified which is not to be discussed in front of the crowd uh, in in front of the crowd definitely we just you know bring them to a four walled room in principal's cabin or any other cabin we counsel and then we don't call the guest speakers from the outside community we always feel that we should give you know volunteership to the parents as well because exactly. we have many doctors we have many psychologists we have many engineers and many different people you know many uh, you know women and entrepreneurs are there so we call them so that as a parent they will be facing lot many things at home also with their kids hmm. the same time, along with whatever the inputs what we give based on that we conduct this kind of you know Uh, you know workshops for the students taking the help of our parents only so this mm-hmm. is what because we are 2000 plus almost the you know strength of our school so we generally identify people within you know our this only it's a good suggestion mm-hmm. yes we call the outside people also based on the requirement wonderful wonderful thank you over to you miss minakshi i see uh, we all are talking about the prevent uh, curative met- um, methods of uh, mm-hmm. bullying but we need to discuss about the preventing uh, areas like how we can prevent it so in that case what we used to do we uh, do not call parents or any guest speaker instead of that we call the old uh, boys of the school mm-hmm. those who have been in the school for so many years mm-hmm. those who have been born to the with the same uh, way of living in the school the same mm-hmm. environment the same a uh, lot uh, sort of teachers and all so they can make them better understand that what actually the impact and consequence of uh, the what they are doing actually mm-hmm. right and uh, for that we need to make a very clear cut rules and regulation instead of um, because uh, the those who are bullying actually these are not uh, the adults they are small kids mm-hmm. we need to we are equally responsible for their behavior as well Mm-hmm. Though the physical health is the personal or the thing which they have to take care, but the mental health is in the role. Uh, we also play an equal role to make them uh, mentally. Exactly, have, exactly. So hmm. the people, the, the the students, those who are bullying, actually, we need to take care of their ment- mental health as well. Mm-hmm. So how we are treating them? because sometimes what happens in the classroom if they are bullying because in the school there are some areas where they can uh, bully like in the classroom in the corridors in the playground in the dining hall in that way and especially in the washroom mm-hmm. so uh, like in the classroom if they are bullying somebody so in that case sometimes what happens to take it as a on a lighter mode teachers also encourage or sometimes they ignore that uh, mm-hmm. actually the bullying is going on or not so we need to as being a teacher we need to immediately intervene to stop it mhm you know that's the same reason stop. that's the same reason when we started this discussion miss anju has specifically mentioned that we need to segregate the areas and segregate that what is bullying and what is not so we need to train our teachers for all the information okay now we have done this thing this is bullying and if this is happening this is not bullying and what we were discussing before that we were only discussing the preventive part we were not discussing any other things so there are uh, there were many things which they have discussed there were many thing which they have mentioned okay by calling the parents so they were also engaging the community at large what you were suggesting this is all this is also true because calling the same alumni right from the same institution will always bring more confidence in the institutions Uh, the credibility i would rather say okay that okay we have started in this institution this institution has a 130 years old legacy and we have to maintain it so do not indulge in any of the program or any of any such activity this this will harm your career or harm your reputation right over to you miss anju please make your point 
And yeah, like Minakshi was talking about preventive and then, you know, uh, when it comes to preventive, we have already talked about that. What I wish to add on to all this is that not, uh, see, despite taking all preventive measures, we all know that one or the other odd case of bullying emerges, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when the bullying case comes in front of us and now what should be our approach? Should it be punitive or reformative? I again personally very strongly believe that punitive approaches do not work with children. Reformative mm -hmm. approaches do work. The children, they are in the process of making. A child in class 7th or 8th class or maybe 10th class doesn't know what harm is it causing. And you know, bullying always arises out of power imbalance. Exactly. We think only the victim is traumatized. Believe me, the person who mm -hmm. is bullying is equally traumatized his emotions and things are not settled. He or she needs more, you know, uh, uh, more compassion from us and a lot of counseling and personal connection with some authority who, who knows how to handle and tackle the children and take them to their, their folds. Hmm. Because victim is getting sympathy from everybody. And, and the person who has bullied is, is actually at the target. Hmm. And the but nobody is getting to know why the person is doing yeah. that thing. Yeah, and that's what I'm coming. That's what I'm coming to. Hmm. So we have to find out. We have to find out why this child is doing what. Like Sir has said, Rohit Ashu Sir has said, the child is seeking attention. Uh, this was what for a very long time we believed into all this kind of uh, belief system. Lately, my uh, team of principal and the vice principal they have attended the training which was revisiting discipline in the school and what they came out with, what they brought home was and then we, uh, wherever we go for any training, so we come back and we organize a training for the entire team in the school. Mm -hmm. so what the best point they brought out was that till now we are, we have been believing that these children are seeking attention. Believe me, no child is seeking attention. Do not consider that children are disturbing the classes. Just look, why, why is that child disturbed? Find out the reason for that child disturbance, all disturbing element, everything in the class will be settled. Right? So this is what I want to focus on. Let's find out the reason. That's, why that that's child a very important point that you have raised. And moreover, when we talk about this kind of mechanism or this kind of behavior identification, it requires a lot of efforts, right? And we need to train the teachers and it requires a lot of men arts in place. So that's the reason, that's reason why not many schools are focusing on identifying these things. Because they know prior to this, they, okay, if we want to engage our teachers, it requires a lot of interventions, require a lot of time to invest in. And not every teacher is well trained. Not every teacher has their, you can say, man bhi nahi hota. Itna unko lagta hai ki chiz karne se koi fayda bhi nahi hoga. And this is not the profession which they have taken it. So I'm just talking about the challenges because being into the industry in the past 10 years, because I have seen that they are not very keen, right? Uh, it creates a lot of, yeah. I will I'll just add on to this. Believe me, uh, you know, uh, teaching had been a very easy task conceded. It was conceded exactly. a very easy job and profession. Believe me, being a teacher takes a hell lot of dedication. <laughs> like Minakshi said she never wanted to be a teacher. Hmm. Yes, I never wanted to be a teacher. But once I entered teaching, once I entered, I, I just got to know in three months that I was cut for it. And hmm. no looking back after that. Hmm. By choice or by chance, if you are into it, you have to give yourself mind, body and soul to your work. Hmm. And when it comes to teachers not uh, train, we, we train our teachers. Every hmm. teacher's role today is of being counselor. Teacher hmm. doesn't come to teach all information, all knowledge is on our fingertips. Exactly. Everything is there. Exactly. They don't need us as teachers. Exactly. They need us as facilitators, exactly. the coaches, as mentors. What else that you're bringing? I mean, all the information is available on Google or yeah. YouTube or ChatGPT. What else that and you're bringing in place? Yes. And, and I believe teachers have to be equipped with this. And when it comes, teachers do not want to uh, hmm. stay and learn something. I believe the kind of culture a school creates, wherein the teachers are willingly ready to learn. Exactly. And wherein a lot of personal, personal investment of time goes from the top leadership. Exactly. That culture evolves. That let culture me ask, evolves. let me ask, let me put another question and uh, let's focus on that question for the next five to six minutes. So the impact of bullying on mental health and well-being of students is significant. So how do you prioritize the mental health support in your school for the anti-bullying efforts? 
would like to have views from every speaker just one 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 minute speaker mr rohit would you like to start what kind of mechanism that you have in your school especially when it comes to supporting the students with their mental health yeah in that case as i already told earlier also that if we happen to find that the region behind this uh, i mean abnormal behavior of the child mm mm-hmm. we need to we need to take the parent into consideration what happens there in the fully residential schools it's very difficult to call the parents from so far distance mm-hmm. but ours is a day come residential so mm-hmm. the parents are staying very nearby mm-hmm. we pass on the information to the parents and we call the parents taking parents into confidence regarding any kind of action which we are taking it could be correcting it could be sometime very partially punitive also Mm-hmm. we need to take parents into confidence so they again try to help us out they cooperate us this is what we do is and even what we do is sometimes we go to the concerned class like uh, regarding this washroom area and all some problems there are so many such problems every school faces mm-hmm. so there are some particular classes you know sometimes the students are very much behind of keeping the name of their class on the top ki we are the topmost class in the school who really you know command the school or हम यहाँ के शेयर है टाइप की फीलिंग बच्चों में आती है बिकॉज दे आर चिल्ड्रेन आफ्टर ऑल सो इन दैट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर क्लास द प्रिंसिपल हिमसेल्फ और हर सेल्फ नीड टू गो एंड टॉक टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड मेक देम वेरी लाइट एंड कंफर्टेबल एंड टू मेक देम अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट एवर दे आर डूइंग इट्स गुड फॉर सम फन और जॉक फॉर समटाइम्स but mm-hmm. once you it is going to spoil the entire smart most fear of the school mm-hmm. the juniors are going to learn and imitate and do the same thing so mm-hmm. the seniors are expected really to set an example before the juniors mm-hmm. that funs and jokes are only limited not much so that come sometime if not being taken care of ultimately are being turning into bullying mm-hmm. so there are so many such kind of strategies plans and actions that the entire school community is taking up together wonderful wonderful i would like to give you one example so recently we've also started one initiative called the inspired valley podcast where i invite the founders from india from different different areas and uh, i deep dive into their success strategy what what they are what they have done it differently how they have done it differently where they are right now so today uh, there was 37th episode and the founder was from ue so he was from india but he recently has moved to ue so he started one company called mamblu mamblu m i m b l u mamblu what i really liked about that company so this company is a mental health uh, uh, startup right where they are providing the therapies what more interested were what, what more interesting was it they are providing therapy as a text based therapy solutions so suppose if you want therapy you don't need to go to a therapist or a psychologist and doing the session with face to face either on webinar or on physical sessions what you can do you can maintain your anonymity and you can just write it down and text it down with all the challenges and the person who is on the other side will give you all the solutions not at the same time but later in the day so you are continuously having the conversation with your therapist and being the anonymity has been maintained you can share all the challenges which are inside your head so that was my question because i am sure and as miss anju has rightly said that the bully both the person the person who is bullying and the person who is getting bullied right do both the person are facing some mental health issues believe it or not right do the extent might be different so how your school is doing or intervening in the mental health space how you are providing the counseling so over to you uh, uh, first to miss sujata then to over miss anju ah uh, yeah so here uh, you know when we identify that the, you know a child is sitting lonely exactly okay mm-hmm. you know, uh, frequent headaches you know nausea mm. which seems to be very common and you know but we can also find a student who is sitting separately who starts feeling ashamed you know mm. who is nervous and then anxious and who feels very very insecure you know mm. what people think about me if exactly. something you know so this kind of incidents come out and then what is is going to be a remark on my forehead you know all these things when we try to find as a teacher as an educator or a mentor whoever every teacher should be trying to identify those kind of students in the classroom this was something in the was, corridor yeah. wherever so once we try to identify that there is a you know small change in their behavior 
and hmm. immediately we need to start monitoring those particular students and then we need to take a feedback from the parents as well to understand how is the child's behavior at home as well hmm. you know once we identify because without parents help definitely we will not be able to do anything it's not just bullying is happening only in the school timings it is not between hmm. 8:30 to 3:30 okay exactly it, is, it can happen after that also because nowadays all the children most of the children have their own personal mobiles especially during this pandemic you know completely changed you know all the students started the dynamics using of the teaching okay. learning space has changed yes yes and there are students have watched not many unwanted things and they have been chatting and then obviously social media has completely ruined these two years was completely <laughs> a hell for the students and the teachers actually yeah and uh, so so when, once we identify that these students have a problem and then we need to check with the parents we need to check with the uh, you know uh, students and as well as the educators and collaboratively we need to identify in what way the child is being bullied you know and then we need to have a one on one conversation and then when we see that there are many such kind of concerns then we should have a generalized session which can not separately or you know labeling one particular child we need to generalize and then we have to take such kind of sessions to avoid In That's the best possible the actions way. because yes. instead of taking yes. the sessions with a complete lot, we can have the yes. sessions with individual classes as well, time to time. Yes, based yes. on the age appropriate exactly. and then exactly. gender appropriate also. Yes, we know that we are having all the you know co-education schools, but at times. But still, there are many things to be discussed, especially with this. Yes. 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 Okay, Wonderful. So okay, is... now we are moving on towards the last section of our uh, webinar. We call it rapid fire round. So in rapid fire round, I take two suggestions from every uh, speaker. So these two suggestions is all about. So we have discussed the bullying and prevention in length, right? I'm sure that you have mentioned a lot of good suggestions. I know you have mentioned a good practices which are happening in your school. You have taken the suggestions from the other principals as well. So now use your creativity and please mention what are two strategies which the schools can implement in their schools ecosystem to prevent and addressing this bullying system which are rampant in the schools. as if now so that could be any that suggestion could be something which you have not implemented as if now but maybe in future you wish to implement so i'm giving you 30 seconds to think about it but still i want to have two suggestions from you so please do not mention the same suggestion which you have already mentioned <laughs> right yeah so i'm giving you 20 30 seconds to think about it and uh, first i'll go to jashree ma'am then anju ma'am then minakshi ma'am then over to sujatha ma'am the last my rohit sir that be fine and please do not discuss in length we only have 5 minutes left <sighs> two refreshing suggestions may yeah. i start um yeah. I, i i'll go with, okay uh-huh. yeah i'll go with jashree yes. ma'am first yes. then to anju first ma'am first of all uh, as you are asking for the two suggestions so first i want that whatever bullied so that should be pro, uh, promptly recognized and promptly it will be discussed in the office or whatever will be the way i mean to okay. say ki the system should matlab jab jo cheez ghatna ghati hai usko tabhi ke tabhi usko identify karke usko intervene ya properly resolve kiya jaye whether through the whether through the means uh, teacher whether through the coordinator through any the, medium per se but, but jab bhi cheez hua hai then instant the usko solve karna chahiye fine promptly it should be come to the administration Fine. And second thing, like you are telling me, ki don't tell the way you are doing. But one thing I think we left in this session, the thing is that whenever I am calling in my office, the parents, mm-hmm. like the student who is bully or who is being uh, bullied, so I am always always telling the parents, you are not giving a proper time, a quality time to your children. Mm-hmm. This is the main uh, main focus these days. Like mm-hmm. if the parents, mother or father, if the evening one hour. Whether the mm. night time, the time you sleep. should know your child properly. What the yeah. child If is doing. If they are talking yeah. about who are your, uh, who are your friends, how they are talking with you, what is the problem going on, how your studies, or whether they will not talk anything about the studies. Mm, that's Because a good solution. Don't want to yeah. talk about the studies yeah. with their parents. That's a good solution. But we will talk about all these things. How your school is going on? How your teachers? How your, so maybe they are going to tell something to the your father or to the mother. And then that's a wonderful suggestion yes ma'am even ha that's and a wonderful really whether it is 15 minute whether it is 20 minute that should be given to your child whether wonderful. the child is small or whether it is of 11th or 12th class but wonderful it should be given ma'am. by the parents thank you thank you ma'am over to you anju ma'am 
yeah what i would love to uh, uh, present my two suggestions is that one Please. is that let us all top leadership in the school build the capacity of the teachers to recognize respond and report to the bullying second is Wonderful. that uh, what we do actually in our school we start in the uh, morning classes the teachers will take positive self affirmations wherein we mm. the child will be sitting calm and cool in a meditative state and we'll be giving the commands guided meditation i am a good child i am a happy child i am a responsible child i love my friends i play happily with them mm. like this kind of positive self affirmations we give for to our children in classes starting from nursery to you can say primary classes till it goes in a regular mode two three minutes daily two three times because there most of the times it is by the mother teacher hmm. and this has started bringing a positive outlook towards the self hmm. the child whose need is any need which is not met hmm. the child who is telling himself daily or herself daily that i am a resource. pardon ma'am pardon ma'am you yeah. are doing this for which classes just that primary classes that's true junior kg senior kg first second third fourth kindergarten third. kindergarten classes starting from nursery and we do this with in our weekly sessions with our senior students class wonderful no, that's a good suggestion then daily but at least for junior classes because there is the beginning there is the wonderful beginning. this one is working wonderfully amazing and uh, i personally would again recommend a reformative approach preventive and reformative approach preventive not let it happen and reformative if it has happened not punitive wonderful over to you ms minakshi what are you two good suggestions I uh, see. Uh, I'll add uh, one point with Jeshri, ma'am. That uh, yes, uh, we need to make our parents aware that they have to give time to the children at home. Apart from giving the time, they should also notice the behavior of child when they are coming from school. In the day school, uh, even in boarding school, the foster parent uh, should be given this responsibility. Uh, whether the children are facing any decreased appetite, any hesitation, mm. nightmares. or any anxiety such kind of issues if they can if they are uh, seeing in the students in the behavior front. yes so their behavior should be read and properly and that should be reports to the school management as well and they should also can go to the counselor because though we principals and teachers are the best counselor for the student so uh, they can report to the uh, school wonderful so that can be rectified Yes. another uh, is uh, because the main stakeholder in the though we are playing our role in a proper way but the other two stakeholders of this uh, school society as a whole uh, mm -hmm. school we want to get involved so parents one thing another one is students themselves mm -hmm. so uh, one of my friends school is doing that uh, they have created a dcim group mm -hmm. club so that is a digital citizenship and uh, internet maturity group Mm -hmm. so they have a, a club is there in which a group of students is there those who are first they are uh, taught how to be digitally sensitive and uh, aware about the digital uh, in, uh, citizenship and uh, how they should use internet mature in a maturity way in a mature way now they are responsible to uh, give uh, this information to other students in a groups in classes or in assembly the way the school works that's a wonderful situation dcim mm. club should be uh, the responsible group because it is the students group so they will be more effective and uh, they can uh, effectively counsel the students that how mature, in a mature way they can use the internet another thing is the students should be also counseled that instead of having fear from the parent that if uh, they will complain against the cyber bullying to the parent uh they fear that uh, their phone should be taken uh, back by the parent because uh, the moment the child is uh, complaining uh, any cyber bullying against them the parent do this thing first that they take away the, their mobiles and computers so they can do one thing that could, that get in the counseling session of the parent that they can keep their monitors their computers in a central part of the uh, house so that every can everyone can see what the children are doing on the system and uh, the this was the prominent thing. this was a prominent suggestion when we were using the uh, you can say cpus and the physical the big systems but now everyone is having their small laptops now, the ipads so it's not uh, it's not much feasible but in our times yeah. this was the mechanism in place 
But that, if they are using mobiles, in that case also the parents can uh, give some specific areas, like the child will keep their mobile in the one rack in the kitchen. Or that's a very contentious thing to write now because it totally depends upon family to family. So let's not get into this. But it's a wonderful suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Manakshi. One more thing I want to add here: another bullying can be happen outside the school in the buses as well. Mm-hmm. So, Ms. Manakshi would like to refrain uh, because we are already crossed our um, the existing time. So let yeah, me talking. give opportunity to the mm-hmm. other speakers. That let me uh, so that we can finish on time. Yes. Yeah, so over to you, Ms. Sujata. You have two good suggestions. Ah, uh, yeah. So actually, you said not to repeat. So uh, <laughs> I was thinking that we need to create uh, you know sets of rules for the children to follow. That could be one. Mm-hmm. And then you know, awareness program. What actually bullying is because children don't know. and what hmm. all things come under bullying so one hmm. awareness kind of program and we can also have a nice school club you know generally we have so many hobby clubs which happen in the schools hmm. okay which we work it on saturdays so so we can also have a school club not only for the adolescent kind of for this one we can have one bullying school club also with you know some nice name so these are hmm. the kind of new suggestions which you know i was just thinking about so you can bring more future psychologist in place huh <laughs> wonderful thank you yes over to you mr rohit please your two good suggestions yes sir it is a team work and what i believe within 30 seconds i can suggest is to equip and train the staff members or the faculties mm-hmm. there in the school because principal cannot reach everywhere exactly and wherever we happen to find that some some of the staff members are not equipped enough they they can be trained again by the principal that is one thing that the staff member need to be equipped well second thing as a class teacher or some call it hrt homeroom teacher whatever it is within the class itself such issues can be resolved by the teachers but everything should be reported to the principal of the school because mm-hmm. wherever something is being done in a wrong way the principal can guide again and others also not to i mean conduct the things in that way in which it is creating wrong impression upon it and only one that is taking parents into confidence it we have to determine that what is to be communicated to the parents and in which way we need to communicate exactly. we need to educate and make parents also aware that what steps they should take next in order to ensure that the child's creativity is not hampered exactly. and self esteem of the child is protected wonderful wonderful let me formally end this webinar then we can have a small discussion so again thank you everyone thank you ms jashri anju ma'am minakshi ma'am rohit sir sudhata ma'am for giving this wonderful suggestions i'm sure our audience will be delighted when they'll going to listen this webinar and when you will going to share this webinar with your own teachers they're going to have a number of suggestions with them right so on the behalf of the entire team of inspired valley i thank you everyone for making time out and making this initiative a huge success Thank you.